Hey guys, Metal Breakdown here. So this is the kind of stressful video to make because it's the video I've been waiting to make the entire year. At least, it's not my first time doing it. I did it for 2016 last year. I did it on uh, December 4, 2016, so almost one year tomorrow. Crazy how time flies. And yeah, this time, I think I'm getting better to make reviews and everything so hopefully this video will be better than last year hopefully you will enjoy and again i'm making it into two parts so the first part will be um from 11 to 20 and my top 20 of the best metal album of 2017 and yeah i'm only putting metal album in that list uh just feels like it's more cohesive i could do a top 10 maybe of rock album but i even the top 10 would be hard because i'm not listening to uh, that much rock music maybe a few rock album would have been in the top 20 but not a lot so yeah just feel like it will be more cohesive to only put metal album in that and at the end of the part two of the video for the top 10 i'll do a giveaway uh, i'll give away the um best album on my list so if you want to know which album um is the best album just watch this video and the other one to find out and i'll explain uh, all the rules in the other video for the giveaway so stay tuned and watch both of my videos if you don't want to miss anything so let's fucking go already for uh the top 20 of the best album of the year uh starting with the album in uh, the position from 11 to 20 let's fucking do this so to start off this top 20 video um in the last position in the top 20 which is far from the first place but at the same time a really good place because I kicked out so many good albums from this top 20, so even if it's the last one, it's still a pretty fucking great album. And I'm talking about Mesmer by North Lane, which kind of follow the path that uh, Event Sevenfold did with their album The Stage, which was my album of the year last year. Uh, for this album, Mesmer, which was a surprise release, uh, they did a great job with it. Still uh, debuted at number four in Australia, their home country, despite the fact that it's a surprise release, just like the stage did, top four in America, despite a surprise release. And this album is great. Um, it's a killer album, starting with the song Citizen, which is probably my favorite of the album. And another great highlight from that one is the last song on it, uh, Paragon, which is a tribute to a Tom who died in, who died from cancer in 2016 from the band Architects. So yeah, really great tribute and incredible album in general. After that, in the 19th position, uh, I'm putting Phantom Anthem by August Burns Red. I was new to this band, believe it or not, before 2017 and this first uh, single that was released in the summer, if I remember correctly, Invisible Enemy, I never heard, not even one fucking song by um, August Burns Red, almost saw them before that in festival in June, but I missed that unfortunately, and now they're coming to my town in January, so maybe... I'll catch them, I'm still not sure, uh, it will depend on my budget, but a great album in general, I haven't heard any of their other album in its entirety, so I can compare it to their previous effort, but overall this album, uh, Phantom and Tem is great, and I will uh, still listen to it throughout next year and the years to come, and the years to come for sure. After that, in the 18th position, the album, the Deadcore album by Make Them Suffer Worlds Apart. At first, when I first heard it, I was like, oh my fucking god, this album is so great, it will end up at least in my top 5 or so. And I even named it Album of the Month of July, I think, at first, because of how great it is. 
I still like it a lot, in fact, it's in my top 20, so, and in the 18th position, so not a bad album at all, just after a few time I was like, oh, it's good, but maybe not that great, but still a fucking killer album, I, I will still listen to it a lot in the future for sure too, uh, that's not even a question, and just not enough fucking huge song on it, like, it's still like 9 on 10 album if I would have to rate it, but uh, we would need more song like Grating Teeth, uh, Fireworks, and I think um, Midnight Run was also one of my favorites, so, great album, but not, it just missed a little something to be a bit higher in my list. After that, in the 17th position, I'm going with with um, an album that was released really recently, so maybe my opinion will change about it if you ask me uh, where I would put it in a few months. But for now, uh, Red Before Black Pie, Cannibal Corpse, is at the 17th position. Really great death metal album. So far, I just noticed that, but all the album that I named are pretty much all in different genre, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it's a killer. Not as good as the classic Cannibal Corpse album, like uh, Vile or Butcher That Bird, to name only a few, but definitely great and better than the last few, in my opinion. You might disagree, but this is what I'm thinking. After that, in the 16th position, also a really recent album, and I'm talking about Psychosis by Cavalera Conspiracy. Um, it's a great one, also a band I did not know before 2017. Of course, I know Max from Sepultura and his other band, um, Sofly, but I never heard Cavalera Conspiracy before which is a shame because this album is a killer so I still need to listen to the rest of their discography and if I would have to go with a favorite song on uh, Psychosis I would probably pick Judas Paria so there you go for this one after that entering the top 15 uh, I'm going with an album I don't think I even talked about it once on the channel so this might surprise you, but at the same time, not at all, since I put it in the thumbnail. But I'm talking about Nightbringers by the Black Dahlia Murder. I could not name a favorite from this album, because each song on it is just fucking killer. And <laughs> when I first listened to this album, my jaw was on the floor. It's incredible. From start to finish... Not a real long album, only 9 songs, but still a great album. This band was also in my town like 2 months ago, and it was during an exam night, so I had to miss that, but I'm so fucking sad. Next time, I'm not missing the Black Dahlia murder, when they will come to Montreal again, I'll fucking be there, right on the fucking barricade to see that fucking killer band. After that, in the 14th position, a band I talk a lot about this year and especially this album and this band in question is Die Art is Murder with their new album Dear Desolation, which was a huge surprise because it's the return of CJ of course and it's kind of different from the album before that, Holy Wars. Um, I prefer Dear Desolation way more, maybe there's not that many variations in the vocals that could have been better because throughout the entire album the vocals are pretty much the same like i don't know how to say it but like no i or not never too low always on the same level but there's definitely some killer song on this album it's incredible uh one of my favorite is the son of misery which is is inspired by Behemoth a lot. Um, if you don't hear the Behemoth influence in that one, you're fucking dead. That <laughs> yeah, it's that obvious. But at the same time, they still made it their own. So it's not a copy of a Behemoth song, just 
really inspired by them and I love Behemoth so fucking much that I cannot complain about that. Also, other great track on this album, Puppet Master, uh, the lead single, Slaves Beyond That. And the final curtain, uh, it's not really a fan favorite by, by um, a lot of people, but it was one of my favorite. I even think I put it as my favorite song on the album when I did my album review. Not sure about that, I should check out to uh, confirm that. After that, in the 13th position, this is really surprising even for myself because I listened to that album for the first time like two days ago, I think, and or three days ago max, and I'm talking about the new band Power Trip with their album Nightmare Logic. I'm pretty sure it's a new band. I think it's their first album, but I'm really, really not sure. I could be wrong. Um, So I'm not saying that is the truth, but I think it's the first album. And it's a fucking killer. Only eight tracks, like a classic album by Metallica, which were containing like eight tracks like this one. And it's really, for me, a real throwback to uh, classic trash metal. To give you an idea of how this album sounds, if you haven't listened to it yet, if you haven't, you need to fucking do this. It's incredible. Um, I would describe it as, I said the same exact thing to one of my friends a few days ago when I listened to it. It's like uh, the riff of the album Among the Living by Anthrax at a baby with uh, Tamaria's vocal from Slayer. That's how to describe that album. It's incredible. Um, it will melt your your brain when you listen to it. You need to do that if you haven't already. After that, with uh, in the 12th position, uh, I'm talking about Dead Weight by fucking Wage War. I discovered them with the, the first single on this album, Stitch, I did a reaction for that, and it's incredible. Uh, my only complaint about this album is maybe uh, that there's too many clean vocals in uh, some of the songs, but still a killer album that I've listened a lot of time. Um, they're really good, they're like, they're help a lot by A Day to Remember, I think, but it's way more heavier than um, A Day to Remember. So if the album would have less clean vocals, could even be higher in my list. Um, their cleans are not bad, but it's just that the unclean vocals part are so fucking good and would be even better. It's as simple as that. After that, the last album for this video, after doing the part two with the top 10, is Deep Called Upon Deep by Satyricon. I almost put it at in the 10 position at first, so it would be in the top 10, but at the last minute I switched uh, it with the album that is now in the top 10. You'll see which one it is in the um, other part of this video, but yeah, Deep Called Upon Deep by Satyricon definitely deserve to be that eye in my list because it's that great it was the perfect album to listen during fall because just the mood of this fucking album i was also not really familiar with satyricon before listening to that album i knew a few songs but not more than that and i was like okay it's a good band but nothing more than that now i'm really impressed by them it's such an incredible album also uh, with only eight tracks, but it's enough. Uh, some of them are really long, like Black Wings and Withering Gloom, which is over seven minutes, and there's a few six-minute tracks, so it's great. If you love that kind of music, like you need to listen to it. It's really great, and you'll enter the mood of the album right away. It's a whole journey. You'll love it. <laughs> so there you go for uh, the first 10 album in my top 20. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure to watch the um, second part of this video for my top 10. I'll put it uh, right at the end of this one. So you'll be able to click on it right away. And yeah, also you'll find out which album I'll give away at the end of this video and how to participate to win it. So don't miss that and click on the video in a few seconds. See you in the next part, guys.